Hey guys, this video is a setup guide for the Lofted Aero Smart Sequencer, a control device for retractable landing gear and doors designed to be more flexible and easier to use than others available on the market. It can control up to nine retracts and doors and is set up with a configuration app that's cross-platform and runs on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. The aircraft that you see it installed in here is a Lofted Aero Valkyrie which is a sport jet inspired by loyal wingman combat drones. It's a good example for this guide because it has three electric retracts and four landing gear doors that we can set up using the smart sequencer. You can see that I've already got this wired in here, but the first thing that I'm going to do for the guide is go ahead and unplug the servos for the landing gear doors and set them off to the side. This way we can set up the endpoints and direction for the electric retracts without worrying about them colliding with the doors during setup. The pinout for the smart sequencer is detailed in an image in the background of the configuration app. But in summary, we've got the input from your gear switch on the top, the optional input from your rudder stick below that, nine configurable outputs, and lastly, the output to your nose wheel steering servo. The reason for the input and output for the rudder and nose wheel steering is so that you can have independent control for your nose wheel from your rudder. That way we can stop it from moving when your landing gear is retracted and avoid exercising your retract servo if you're mechanically prevented from doing so or just don't want it moving around for no reason. Also, this allows you to trim your nose wheel steering servo and set its endpoints independently from your rudder. We'll start the configuration process by getting connected to the app. First, plug a mini USB cable into the port on the side of the smart sequencer. Next, make sure you supply power to your airplane and your receiver so that the smart sequencer is getting inputs and your servos and retracts are powered. Of course, you'll need your RC transmitter for the setup as well, so make sure you've got that handy. Now let's get connected to the app. Select the device from the drop-down menu that corresponds to your smart sequencer, then press connect. The first step is to calibrate the inputs. We'll start with the gear channel. Press the Calibrate button to get started. Then, move the switch in your transmitter to the retracted position as prompted. You'll see the blue slider on the app move to reflect this. Then, press Next to store this position. You may see your landing gear move during the calibration process. If it's wrong, don't worry about it. We'll configure the endpoints and the directions in the next step. Next, move your retract switch to the extend position as prompted. Press the next button to confirm. Finally, press finish to save the calibration. We'll do a similar process with the rudder channel. Press the calibrate button to get started, then hold the rudder stick left. Press next to save, then hold the rudder stick right. Press next again. Center the rudder stick and press next a final time. Then press finish to save the calibration. Before we set up the outputs, endpoints, and reversing, Let's go over some of the general settings for the smart sequencer. The open speed is the amount of time that the landing gear doors will take to open. Similarly, the close speed is the amount of time that the doors will take to close. You can set these as fast or as slow as you want. Typically, I like to use a close speed that's a little faster than the open speed so that I can get the aircraft in a low drag state quickly after takeoff. The open delay setting controls the amount of time between when the doors finish opening and the retracts start to deploy. Typically, electric retracts are slow enough that you don't need to have a delay here at all. 
but you can add one if you choose. The close delay setting works a little bit differently. This is the amount of time between when you start the retraction sequence and when the landing gear doors start to close. So it has to include the period of time your retract units take to cycle. For electric retracts, I found that three and a half seconds works pretty well. But if you have slower or faster retract units, make sure you edit this value to suit them. Next is the startup mode. This is the behavior of the smart sequencer upon initial boot up. The first option, none, will immediately cycle the gear and retracts to the position dictated by your switch and work normally right off the bat. The next option, Open Doors, will open all of the doors upon startup. This protects against the landing gear colliding with the doors in case you've bumped your retract switch after turning your model off and the landing gear start to move. The last option, Wait for Input, is the default and is a little bit smarter than the Open Doors option. This stores the last state of the retracts in non-volatile memory that persists through reboot. On startup, it'll compare your switch position with that state. If they're different, it'll wait for you to move the switch before cycling the gear. Now that we've gone through all the general settings and the startup mode, it's time to start configuring the outputs. You'll notice that in the dropdowns under the functions menu, we can independently set the functions of each output pin. The electric retract option is the standard option for a retractable landing gear unit. In the future, through software updates, this will be expanded to support pneumatic and mechanical retracts as well. The door stay open option is for a landing gear door that stays open when the retracts are deployed, like on this model here. The door reclose option is for a door that closes again after the retracts are deployed. In this model, the three electric retracts are plugged into the first three pins, and that's the way the software is configured by default. So we'll leave that and move on to configuring the endpoints. For an electric retract, it typically doesn't matter that you have a precise PWM value for the retracted or extended positions. It only matters that it be high or low. I like to use 1100 and 1900 for my endpoints for electric retracts but 1,000 and 2,000 are also popular. Here, we're already at 1,900, so we'll try sending it to 1,100 and see where the retract unit goes. You can enter a value, use the arrow keys, or drag the slider. So clearly, that channel was the nose retract, and 1,100 is the retracted position. So we'll press Set Retracted, to store that value. That's most likely to be the same for the other two retracts, so we'll set them there to confirm that they retract. Okay, that's the case, so we'll click Set Retracted for those units. Now, we'll set them all to 1900 to confirm that the retracts deploy. All right, everything's behaving as expected, so we'll click Set Extended on all of those units to set that as the extended endpoint. Now we should be able to toggle our retract switch and see the gear move accordingly. Now it's time to set up the doors, but first, let's retract the landing gear so that they stay out of the way. Next, we'll confirm the functions for the gear door. Uh, we've got four gear doors in this model, and they're all configured to door stay open, so we don't have to make any changes there. But let's drag all the sliders to the middle of the range so that when we power up the doors, they don't bind with anything. Now, let's go ahead and get all the door servos plugged in.
All right, we've got all the landing gear door servos plugged in and powered up. So now we can work on configuring their endpoints. I'll start with the first gear door, which is one of the nose gear doors. I'll move this slider around so that we can see which direction the door goes. Looks like it's heading towards its retracted or closed endpoint. So we'll go ahead and fine tune that one first. I'm using the arrow keys to make some small adjustments here. And I'm going to keep doing that until the nose gear door just about hits its retracted stop. I don't want to go too far and then have the door binding and causing stress to the servo. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to go and click Set Retracted to set that position as the retracted endpoint for this door. Now we can do the same for the second nose wheel door, but since it's a mirror image, it's probably going to have its retracted endpoint in the opposite direction. And that looks like it's the case, so let's keep moving that way. You'll notice that if you hold down the arrow key, the door moves in discrete steps instead of smoothly. This is normal due to the communication rate between the computer and the sequencer. As you get closer, you can fine tune by tapping the arrow keys or entering specific values into the boxes. Okay, that looks good. So we'll go hit Set Retracted to set that as the retracted endpoint for this door. Let's do the retracted endpoints for the main gear doors too. We'll pick one and we'll move it in a direction. That was the correct direction, so let's keep going. That looks good, so we'll set that as the retracted endpoint. And let's do the same thing for the last door. That looks good as well. Set retracted. Now let's move on to the extended endpoints. We'll start by getting the doors positioned roughly where we think we'll end up. Now let's do some fine tuning one at a time. Those all look pretty good by eye. I'm gonna grab a ruler here so that I can measure the distance between the doors and the center line just to make sure that everything's symmetrical. Everything looks like it checks out. I'm gonna set the ruler aside and click Set Extended to set the endpoints for all four doors. Okay, those are all good to go, so we're ready to flip the switch and try cycling the gear. Keep in mind the doors might snap closed depending on where your switch is starting from.
Okay, pretty cool. The last thing that we've got to set up is our nose wheel steering. We unplugged that before, so let's go ahead and get that plugged back in now. You can move your rudder stick, and if the nose wheel looks like it's moving the right direction and the right amount, then you don't have to do anything. But I recommend setting the left, center, and right endpoints so that you can trim the nose gear and reverse it as necessary. In this particular airframe, the default travel looks like it's a bit much, even though it's going the right way. So I'll go ahead and drag this slider until it reaches a point that I think looks like a good limit for the nose wheel. That looks pretty good for a left hand turn, so I'll hit set left to save. Then I'll start moving the slider the other way to set the right end point. Again, you can fine tune with the arrow keys. That looks pretty good for a right turn, so I'll press set right to save. Then we'll go back towards the center. And when that looks trimmed, we'll click set center to save that position too. Now before we test this, we'll have to cycle the gear to restart the nose steering routine. All right, it's working and it's got the new smaller endpoints. Now this will only move when the landing gear is deployed, which is useful for the reasons mentioned earlier. Lastly, the most important step is to click the Save Settings button. This takes all of the settings that we've changed so far and stores them in the non-volatile memory so they'll be remembered. Then we can go ahead and disconnect from the app and we can unplug the USB cable. That's it, your smart sequencer is configured. I hope you enjoy, but feel free to reach out to Lofted Arrow through the website or via social media if you have a suggestion for improvement. One of the coolest features of the Smart Sequencer is that both its firmware and its configuration app can receive over-the-air updates and enhancements, so plenty of new features are on the way. Thanks for watching.